Thank you. <coughs> my, my challenge is to present this as, as, as a not a dry subject, but hopefully slightly uh, more interesting and, and wetter, hopefully, in the, in the long term. Um, I'd like to provide you with, with a statement initially. This, this is Prezi, by the way, and it may work, it may not work, but we're going to try it anyway. Anglesey has the potential to become a global centre of excellence for tidal energy. And my, my job in the next 10 minutes, 7 minutes, is, is to convince you that this is true. Now, I, first of all, I'd like to present model ice. And it, it's, it's, a lot of people say model ice, not, not the first. It's not French, it's Welsh. Model ice is, is a, is, means a voice of the sea, model ice. Tell everybody it's model ice. It's not Morlay. OK, so where is Morlais? Well, it's just to the, uh, to the west of Holy Island. And if you were to stand on South Stack and look out, you could admire our zone. All 35 square kilometers of, of, of zone. Now, we have split the zone into eight subzones, which will hopefully uh, house up to eight developers. We will see. We have um, started on the process of EIA consent. Now, our aim is to make life easier for developers. Our life is to make life easier for everybody. That's how we survive. Um, so we will present a, a progress consent over the next few years, uh, hopefully to achieve consent. Um, we have uh, started in the process of securing grid. We have already secured 13.5 megawatts with, with Monesto, and we have put a bid in to the national grid for an additional 150 megawatts to export that power from the zone. And current estimates, although this may change, is that all this will cost in the region of 30 million pounds. So why are we so positive about Anglesey? Well, we have to, we're being paid for it, but also we are passionate about, <laughs> about this zone. Um, now, we have uh, put in a bid for European money for £18 million. Pounds. Um, we're about halfway through that process, and hopefully by six months, we will have £18 million pounds in the bank. However, securing EU money is potentially the, just part of the jigsaw. It's that part in the corner. Securing the match funding is far more difficult, and we need the match funding. So we have engaged with a strategic partner to identify potential match funding. Now, at the moment, we're, we're in discussions with Balfour BT, but it could be another, another partner. Now, as expected, a commercial investor have a different set of requirements to a public funder. They are seeking a rate of return on their investment. And our current financial model being presented in two tenants reflects this. We would expect any partner investing commercially to look at that rate of return on investment. However, we are open to other models, open to suggestions. Now, we can't confirm anything with, with regards to BBI. Discussions are fairly uh, early. However, they have provided us with a statement. So just, uh, come on, sir. Now, Balfour BT Investments are currently assisting Mensa Mon in developing the project into a robust, equitable, and innovative opportunity to the benefit of all stakeholders. We are using our expertise in infrastructure investments to provide advice on all aspects of the project so as to ensure the long-term viability of the project while providing strong benefits for all potential tenants and the local community. Now, I don't add much to their statements beyond saying that they have willingly invested their time and expertise and have helped us firm this offer we are currently making to tenants. However, things may change. Um, as I uh, we mentioned later on, we are going out with the ITT um, based on what we know at the moment. In six months' time, things may change, and developers should um, uh, take that on board. Why else are we positive about Morlais? Well, you may or may not know, I actually work for Menter Morn. Morlais isn't a company. It's a, it's a project, a fairly big project, but it's a project with men, within Mentor Mon. We're an enterprise agency, been working on Anglesey for 20 years, and that helps. We've been doing things on Anglesey with lots of people for 20 years. Now, a very recent example of how this can help is we, we need a substation. You know, a substation is crucial to this project. 
Um, and ten years ago, we, we developed a coastal path around Anglesey and spent £8 million on that coastal path. And in doing that, we worked with a lot of landowners. And we're going back to the same landowners now and asking them, can we stick a substation on your land? Um, and having had that relationship before helps. Now, one of the key landowners is the RSPB. And we had a meeting with the RSPB in their offices. And when it comes to the birds of Anglesey, we wrote the book. Well, in fact, we published the book, but things like this help. This book was on the shelves on the RSPB. So if we had gone there with a glossy brochure and said we're passionate about birds, it may have had some impact, but to show them that we are passionate and have been for 20 years about the wildlife and the environment and the people of Anglesey helps when it comes to present, presenting this project. So what, what else has Anglesey to offer? Okay, we can start this now. Sorry, there's a thing on the back. Um, we've got a very good resource close to the... Here. <laughs> very, yeah, almost. Yeah, right. We've got a very good resource close to the shoreline. Uh, across the island, we've got uh, Hollyhead with all their resources, and you've got Hollyhead Towing Company there. If you go over to the east of the island... Then we've got Wilver Power Station. Now, this is being decommissioned, and you have a lot of people there, skilled people looking for work. So they could be of use to, to developers. <laughs> Down by the Menai Straits, we have CCAMs with all their expertise and their resources and their boats. And all of this is with, within one hour, one and a half hours of places like Manchester and Liverpool. Anglesey is not remote. However, I am aware that talk is cheap. A lot of talk here today. Um, Obviously, it's a, it's a conference, um, but we need to get devices in the water. Um, now, in November last year, we, invite, we invited expressions of interest to go into that zone. 22 presented, um, no, 22 registered an interest. Some of them we'd never heard of, uh, about three or four. 14 eventually presented their full EOIs, and these were very... Um, comprehensive, detailed documents. People are taking time over these. People are serious about going into the zone. Um, last Friday, we sent out documents with the invitation to tender. Um, again, we require further information from developers to make a decision. And hopefully by June, we would have selected the preferred developers to go into that zone. So, just to recap, we are pursuing five critical paths um, and these are happening concurrently. We are, you know, obviously, we are uh, exploring deployment in the zone with the EOIs and the ITTs. We are pursuing grid. <laughs> so, um, we are pursuing um, consent. We are going after the money. And we are also looking at developing the supply chain. Each of these present their own unique challenge and impact on each other. This is a complex project, and we all, most people here are dealing with very complex projects. I think mine is the most complicated, but I know I'm, I'm probably uh, biased. Um, but what we have, and what's been demonstrable really over the last two years we've been involved, is the, the goodwill and support from all stakeholders and developers. Now, this goes a long way to realizing the potential. This will go a long way to realizing the potential for Anglesey, but also the sector as a whole. And that's it. Thank you very much.